Hey guys, it's the Micro Garden, and am I excited to come to you guys today? If you guys haven't noticed, you probably should get some glasses because this thing is huge, and I am absolutely pumped. I got it actually at my work. We had a random shipment of tropicals come into my greenhouse. Yes, I do work at a greenhouse, for those of you that don't know. And we had a random shipment of tropicals. Nobody even knows who ordered them or why they came on the truck. But all of a sudden, these guys were starting to unload these things and were like, We live in Michigan. What in the world do we do with a bunch of tropicals? So we, uh, we put them on clearance and... I came home with two of them somehow. Um, they, they are fruiting, they're huge. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm just gonna jump right into it. I was just gonna bring you guys along because it was super cool. I'm, I'm so excited to try these out. Uh, these, this is a patio cal, calamondin. It's a calamondin orange and it's just a dwarf orange, I guess. Uh, it doesn't look too dwarf, but it's going to be a sweet grow. I'm really excited for it. And so that's going to be added to the to the micro garden. I got a nice big pot for it. Um, actually, it's going to go in this pot right here. This is a bigger pot. And then I have down here, you can't see it, but it's down, in the f down under the frame here. This is actually a grapefruit. Yeah, this is a dwarf. Uh, it's a dwarf grapefruit, but I couldn't tell you this, um, I guess it's just a grapefruit, I don't, it doesn't sell me, uh, oh, ruby red grapefruit, ruby red grapefruit, my favorite type of grapefruit, so, yeah, and it's actually got a few tiny little grapefruits already on it, so, I'm super excited, so let's get these plants up here so they can join the micro garden, I got a spot made already over there for them, and I think they're going to fit in really, really great. The, uh, the soil that I'm going to be using is, uh, since they're tropicals, they do like their soil being a little bit on the acidic side, but really well draining, and the ability to hold water but not be saturated, because they are tropicals, they don't like to be dried out. So I'm using some sphagnum peat moss. This stuff was really great. It's my first go-to thing for most tropicals, and that I'm using that. And then I got just a generic potting soil that had a, a high sand content in it. I know a lot of people will actually shy away from that, but you, number one, you can get it super cheap. Um, aside from that, like I was saying, the high sand content in the soil will help it to drain even better. And since most tropicals are somewhere near the ocean, you do get a lot of sand and really good draining soil. So. With all that said, I'm trying to replicate as much as possible their, their natural environment here. Also, I did add some organic fertilizer to the mix as well, so they're going to get that extra boost. And then I'm going to pot them up and give them a nice watering, and they're going to join the micro garden where they belong. All right, so let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm actually going to do is since I don't want soil falling out of the holes in the bottom here, I want to take some of this dry sphagnum some you know, dry sphagnum peat. I'm actually just going to layer it down here in the bottom and it's going to kind of plug up some of those holes because I really don't want to make a giant mess as much as possible at least. And so I'm just going to throw that down there. Again, a little bit has fallen out, I mean, but there's really nothing you can do about it. It's naturally going to happen a little bit. And when I, when I water, I'll have a saucer I'll have one of these, uh, oh shoot, you can't really see it, there we go. Yeah, these beautiful saucers are amazing to, to put underneath your plants. So if you do have it indoors, they don't run all over the floors and stuff. And I do have a tarp down, but still I'd rather not have a bunch of setting water everywhere. And it's just not, uh, not very neat. All right, so that's done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill in this pot a little bit of soil here, at least in the bottom of it. And uh, I did get a lot of questions about my last video, my returning video, and a lot of people were asking me what my temperature was and my humidity was, and I briefly mentioned it in the video what my temperature was. It was 85 at the time, but I forgot to mention what my daytime temperature is and my humidity level. 
for tropicals, they really like it very humid. And a lot of people would think that tropicals can survive in heat and the humidity doesn't matter, but humidity is actually a really key part of having tropicals. Tropicals need to be in at least 80 to 85% humidity. Anything less is typically going to result in browning leaves or really stunted growth. They'll still grow a little bit, you know, but um, they're not going to grow nearly as well as if you had a, um, a really, high humid, uh, really high humidity environment. All right, and that's going to turn out really great. You can't even see them anymore. This is a big tree. All right, so I'm going to try my hand at this really quick. Now, the beauty about this is it actually has a hole in the bottom in this pot. And uh, that's going to make a mess. All right. Well, I tried to not make a mess, and in trying to not make a mess, I still made one. So let's just get this thing potted up here. And... Uh, it definitely really likes sandy soil because I can see what they put the what they potted this up in. This came from Florida. These these plants came on a sh uh, shipment from Florida because we did order some tropicals that were not really like fruiting tropicals. They were more or less a uh, the house plant tropicals. But anyways, so like I was saying with the humidity, I have it generally at about 95% humidity and that's pretty high. But with that high humidity, it also retains a lot of the heat during the night because uh, my nights typically won't get below 85 degrees at night. Sometimes 82 is a low, but my days will occasionally get near 100 degrees in here which is good it's great for tropicals but the the secret behind that is having that high humidity because the higher hu the humidity the more insulation your room has because it has somewhat of a greenhouse effect and it holds the heat in really really well so a lot of people were asking me you know why why so many tropicals why do you do so many tropicals and I have a simple answer for that, and it's why not. I love tropicals, I've always loved tropicals, and it's something that people in northern climates just cannot grow. So whenever I get the opportunity to grow something that's just really unique, uh, I'm always the first person to jump on it. I love growing new things and learning new things, and there's just so much to learn about tropicals because, like I said, you know, you can't grow them here. So people in Florida definitely take them for granted when they just simply use them as a landscape and don't even eat the fruit from it. I think it'd be totally cool to never have to go to the store for anything. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, I want to be, I want to be self-reliant and I don't want to have to rely on the grocery store to provide my food. Well, how cool would it be to have an orchard outside and then a tropical orchard inside and basically all your citruses, all your fruits that you'd ever need to get at the store that you, normally you'd have to import from Florida, but instead you can walk right up to your room and just pick a fruit right off the plant. Like that is seriously my whole thinking behind the thing of why I grow tropicals and why I grow so many. I just, I find it a lot of fun too. It's really enjoyable and relieves a lot of stress, especially when, when you work as much as I do. Um, you know, I'm not one to complain too much, but I do, I do work a lot of hours and it does get exhausting at times and when you can kind of just come up to a place where you can relax, it is truthfully the best feeling ever just to let all your worries and your stresses just go right out the door and just uh, mess around with some tropicals. It's a fun feeling, it's a good feeling, and it's relaxing. So that is why I grow tropicals and that's why I grow so many because I think everything has something that uh, it can offer. I think just having one is cool, but if you can have 10 or 12 or 15, why not? You know, it's just more of an experience for you. Ouch, and this has thorns on it. I forgot about that. Um, I could have probably picked a straighter tree. This one's kind of on an angle, but maybe I can pot it up on an angle and it'll grow straight.
All right, all finished. Now I'm gonna set these things in their place and let's get them watered. All right, and as you guys can see, I have my lights set up. And the beauty about this is, see, I can still adjust them a good probably two feet if I need to, but as you guys can see, there's a fair amount of distance between those two. So while the tree does look big, you know, it's only about three feet tall, and I want to keep it at about that height. A lot of people are going to say, oh, trim it down there where it's all shrubby. That's where the company was keeping it pruned at. But when they stopped pruning it, it got all this beautiful growth. And if you look at this beautiful growth, it's got buds all over it. It's got buds over there. It's got buds right over there. Oops, right there, sorry. And I mean, I want those things to pop. I want, I want lots of buds. And I personally am one to believe that the more foliage there is, the more energy, the more energy there is, it's going to be in a plant. And I personally would rather like to keep more foliage on my plants, especially indoors, because you have artificial lighting, so it's not nearly as strong as the sun, and also, uh, you know, it's going to not necessarily have all the nutrients that the ground would have. So I want all the energy that I can possibly get. Granted, I'm not going to let it get 20 feet tall, but I'm going to prune it off around there, maybe let it grow maybe a foot higher, so that I have a really cool indoor tree. And I think that's going to be awesome to have. And it's going to just going to stay up here and call this grow room its home. Um, and then obviously here you have the grapefruit. And a lot of people would say, oh, cut those off. They're stealing energy from the plant. Well, see, my focus isn't necessarily on massive growth. I just want to have a little bit of fun. I want to see if I can get a fruit. And the plant was already really well established. So I got these watered in. They're doing great. As you can see, I did spill a little bit, or it came out the bottom. I watered them super, super well, so I soaked them. And they're growing really great. I cannot wait. And hopefully I have some oranges pretty soon. I don't see any on there right now, but uh, if you guys look down here, you'll see all these beautiful flowers. Basically, I just take my finger and just just play, play honeybee. And as you guys can see there, there's some pollen on my finger there, and just you can see a little bit better. Just go around and just bzzz, bzzz. So thank you guys for watching, and this is the Micro Gardener. I'll talk to you guys later. See ya. Bye.